Rob and his wife in North Carolina are 51 and 44 and would like to retire in the next three to five years. Are they on track? And what should they consider as far as Roth conversions are concerned once the tax brackets go up, which they are slated to do when that provision in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act sunsets at the end of 2025? Is Mark in West Virginia on track to retire at 59 and a half? And do Joe and Big Al have any pointers on how he can find the love of his life? Mike and Gina in Rhode Island are optimistic about retiring early at 61 and 58, but is their optimism delusional? Jake in rural Michigan is self-employed. Can he do Roth conversions to retire at age 60 and hang out with Big Al in Hawaii? Retirement readiness and Roth conversions today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 472. But first, the fellas spitball on a retirement and real estate strategy for Fifty Shades of Grey and Elena in Massachusetts. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. All right, let's go. We got Grey. We got Grey's Anatomy here. Or is it Grey's, what'd you say, Andy? It's actually from Fifty Shades of Grey is the name of the characters that they've chosen here. Mm. Big fan, I think. I, I will say that I've read it. I'll just leave oh, it at that. Read it. I thought it was a movie. It was, but it was based on a trilogy of books. Oh, got it. Hi, all. Uh, name is Grey. Wife is Elena. We're both 33, turning 34 in the summer, live in Massachusetts, and have a wonderful three-year-old boy. I work at a big four accounting firm, and she is a registered nurse. I drive a Mazda CX-9. All right. She drives a CX-5. Oh, Mazda family. Apparently. Yep. Drink of choice for me is McAllen. Ooh. That sounds like a like sipper right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Life is in particular. Particular. Good cocktail with a tequila base, and she's golden. Here's where I can use a spitball. Market rental income for long-term tenants. I don't include short-term rentals to be conservative. It is currently at about $9,000 a month. At 3% rental increases annually, we estimate to have $200,000 when we're 65. So he's saying that tenant's going to stay in there for, well, for life. That he's going to keep increasing the rent 3% a year, right. which in my experience doesn't usually yeah. happen. Yeah. Usually it's about 1% because you don't want to lose the tenant. Right. They, 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 then they bail. That, so yeah. you just got to keep it until they bail, then you hike it up. Then Yeah. I mean, that's because the vacancy and the repairs, it, it, Kills it, it. Eats, it eats it up. All right. If this premise is accurate, it puts us in a very high tax bracket before contemplating, contemplating other assets. I'd own my property free and clear and can no longer use depreciation interest. So it would appear as though I could potentially have a lot of rental income without a large of deductions or non-deductible expenses. As a result, I'm tempted to contribute to my employer, match, fill both Roth IRAs, and start to pour my remaining investments into my brokerage account. Okay. So he's got a rental. He's 30 years old and he's already planning what that rental income is going to look like in 35 years. Right. It's a, it's a long-term plan. <laughs> so he's like, I don't know if I like the rental. I'm just going to switch my investments and go into a brokerage account. You know, I remember when I was 31 and I was getting, I got married and I did my little spreadsheet to age 62. Yeah. And I found it. I pulled it out at 62. How it, close were you? I, I was actually relatively close, but the components were completely different <laughs> than what I had on there. All right, so here's the stats. We got income, investing, total income, $250,000. he has got rental income, $100,000 gross. So he's got a little Airbnb long-term and student rentals. Uh, we own two duplexes and currently live in one of the four units. Uh, we contribute about $35,000 a year to my Roth 401k amount in two Roth IRAs. Another five to $10,000 into my brokerage account. My wife doesn't contribute to an employer plan given some independent considerations with my job. We don't contribute at all to traditional, but think this is okay given our age, pensions and employer match, which all goes in traditional anyway. Don't know if I should consider Social Security at all given the ages. Likely the max benefit for my wife and I might be $2,000 a month if we plan conservatively. Debt. Just mortgages for two duplexes, but looking to buy forever home before turning 35. Okay. Forever home. Yeah. All right. A couple of years off. The one we live in 
has $400,000 left with a 3.25% interest rate bought in 2019. Current market value is $750,000. Our other property is has a remaining mortgage of $588,000 with 3.25% interest rate bought in 2021. Current market value is a million bucks. They're spending, Al, about $200,000 a year now, but think they would need about $120,000 in today's dollars in retirement, given that half of our spending is attributed to the two mortgages, daycare, savings, etc. All right, let's see. So some other considerations. We'd like to have one more child by 35. Wife might not want to work. If we have a second child, she makes $80,000 of our total income, but my income goes up fairly quickly, about 10 to 15 percent annually on average thanks for all you do been catching up on old episodes all right so he wants to retire he's got some rentals he's got some rental income 401ks Roth IRAs he wants to spend hundred twenty thousand dollars in today's dollars he wants to retire at 65 what do you think can he do it so Joe looking at this he'd like to potentially retire earlier in, in their 50s. Oh, yeah, I got that. 50. So so I, I just ran it at 50. Let's, let's see what happens, right, if, if it were at 50. So he's got a pension yeah. at 50, what, $1,600 a month? Right. So I just, without considering the pension, I took a look at, they have about 350000 now, 17 years, 6%, adding about 45000 a year. That's about $2.2 2 So that's where they would be at age 50. And rental income, let's see, at age 50 would be 45000 Okay. Yep. Anyway, so, or no. Well, we'll be conservative. Call okay. it 50000 Who yeah. knows what's going to happen call it 50. repairs and everything else. So, so, so let, let, got... let's say $2.2 million, let's say at 53% tops, right? So so somewhere around 60000 maybe 70000 would be the amount coming from the portfolio. Maybe another forty, fifty thousand from the rentals, right? So that's one thirty, and yeah, he one thirty, one forty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if he wants one hundred twenty thousand in today's dollars, seventeen years at three percent, that's a couple hundred thousand, right? So it looks like he's about sixty thousand short, seventy thousand short, something like that. Mm -hmm. So retiring at fifty doesn't quite work, although he could or they could work part time and make it work that way. Well, uh, he's got a pretty aggressive goal of retiring at 50. Second, it, his assumptions too is looking at he, he's grossing on the rentals at $100,000. And so he's like, hey, I'm going to gross $200,000 total uh, on my rentals when I retire. I don't know if that's going to be true. There's there's yeah. a lot of things when it comes to rental income that, well, what is your net now? And maybe you just take your net and you, you move that by three or four percent yeah in my long-term projection my biggest thing i was off was rental income sure <laughs> yeah because it's all right well here i'm gonna pay off the debt and then we're gonna increase rents by three percent but guess what there's repairs there's right. dollars that have to go back in there's upgrades there's this there's that so uh projecting that long term versus you know a, a globally diversified portfolio saying hey this is gonna grow at five percent I think you probably have a little bit less deviation on that versus rentals, but you still want to map it out. I, I would say over a 10 year, five year period, you're, you're probably could be pretty close, but he's, he's forecasting 30 years out. Yeah. It makes it hard. I, I would say one thing I would certainly do pension. I, I wouldn't take it at 50 because it's it more than doubles by age 62. So I'd at least wait till age 62. I probably, if you retired at 60, I didn't run those numbers, Joe, but to me, this would probably look just fine. Yeah. If they have another kid, then the wife doesn't work. Elena doesn't work. Right. So that's $80,000 that is out. So you're 33. I get it. You want to retire at 50, but then when you get to 45, you're probably like, yeah, maybe it's 55. Well, except for me, when you but, get in your late 40s, you just can't wait to turn 50 and retire. <laughs> and retire. Well, here's what else happens. Like, so you're 50 years old and you've got a kid who's 15. I'll be 50 years old and have a kid at uh, <laughs> under five. So do you, 
Do you want to be at home all day with it for that? I do. I do. I know, I wanna, I wanna, I know you do. I want to read Tyrius George all day long. It's your life, it's life so sentence. It's better than having 80 meetings and working 80 hours a week. Yeah, so my, my point is when you get there, and I had, as you know, Joe, it's like I had this thing. I was like 50. That sounds good. Or yeah. It's like you had your wine shirt. Wow. I, I still have flip flops. So wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, good luck. I think he's on the right track. Congratulations. You're saving a lot of money. You have a, a, a ton saved. You got some rentals here. So I mean, you have a really good nest egg. The net worth looks strong. Um, the cash flow looks great. Um, keep saving what you're saving. And then who knows, right? We're, we're growing this at a fairly conservative growth rate. A lot of things can happen. Um, you might double down on the rentals and say, hey, instead of a fourplex, I'm going to buy an apartment building. So, I mean, all sorts of things could happen over the next 20 some odd years. Yeah. And I would just say with these numbers, probably not at age 50, probably yes, at age 60. I bet you for a fact, this is, I mean, I want him to call us back when he turns 50. And I guarantee you, and I can't guarantee a lot of things, I bet he's going to be pretty close because I don't know a lot of 30 year olds that have almost $400,000 of liquid assets and it has real estate portfolio that he does. Right. I totally agree. Right. I, I mean, we see 60 year olds that have a, a lot less money. So he's disciplined. He, right. He's got goals. He writes things down. He's mapping things out. I bet you that he, he will be able to do it. But given the numbers and the assumptions that we're running today, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. I would say my main takeaway would be this. The, the, your, what you're doing is fantastic. Keep it up. And then you'll know when the right time to retire is based upon 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever it may be, based upon what's going on in your situation at that time. All right. Thanks for the email. One of the most important financial decisions you make could mean thousands more dollars of income in retirement. How and when you claim your Social Security could completely change your retirement lifestyle, but it's complicated. The Social Security Administration's Basic Guide to Social Security Programs contains 2,728 rules. This week on a brand new episode of Your Money, Your Wealth TV, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA, answer the most commonly asked Social security questions and they help you avoid the mistakes that could reduce your social security benefits watch social security basics you need to know common social security questions answered on your money your wealth tv in the podcast show notes just click the link in the description of today's episode to get there and download our free social security handbook there in the podcast show notes too it goes hello joe big al andy my name's rob my wife and i moved to north carolina from florida we love it here. Four seasons, mountains, beaches, and rolling hills. Goodbye, nine months of humidity and bad tourist behavior. <laughs> Can you relate to that? I, I went to school at University I, of Florida. I know you did. I'm yeah. a Florida Gator. Were you part of the riffraff? I wasn't. You, you were responsible. <laughs> Come on, Al. <laughs> Come on. The important stuff, no kids, pets, no debt, no mortgage. I walked to work or ride my bike. When I have to, I drive a 2003 Toyota Corolla with 190,000 miles on it. My wife drives a 2010 Honda Fit that just surpassed 100,000 miles. Oh, trusty Rusty's there. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. When I'm not climbing mountains, my drink of choice is a cold Czech or German Pilsner on the golf course in Pinehurst. Pinehurst. Man, Ooh. Talking to me, Al. <laughs> you, you got our attention. Do you know well, Pinehurst, Joe? I do know. Yeah, we Pinehurst. all know. We all know. Anyone that's a golf fan knows Pinehurst. Man, there's yes. That's, <laughs> I gotta get there. Low hops, multi in Breedy. The wife likes a glass of red wine on it. Occasional margarita. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. That just got me just revved up. You can get a Pinehurst, little North Carolina, you, getting the hell out of Florida, bad tourist bugs, humidity. You can sort of picture it, can't you? Yeah, four seasons. Right. Our stats, I'm 51, wife 44, two and a half million dollars broken down. Thank you. See, now this guy's right on. Yeah, now it's we can, like now we can picture it. Two and a half million and then 500,000 and then I'm adding all this stuff up. I'm like, holy, this guy's got 10 million bucks. <laughs> right. No, he's got two and a half million. 
And it's broken down into this. $500,000 into a Roth, $900,000 in a traditional IRA, $1.1 million in a brokerage account. All right. I'll collect Social Security at 70 of about $45,000 annually. All right. Still working on the wife's Social Security strategy, but she's on target for $30,000 annual uh, benefit at age 70. Although we are still working on our options since I'm seven years older. We both have longevity in the family and planning to continue the family tradition. All right. Good for you. All right. So... We would appreciate your spitball on the plan to possibly leave work in the next three to five years. So he's punching it. Yeah. 55. He is. Yep. She would work one to two years more for health insurance and allow room for Roth conversions at low rates. I want to still be able to climb the tough stuff while I'm still able. Well, he's a hiker. Mountain climber. Yeah. I don't climb mountains. I play golf with him. Drink some pills. <laughs> <laughs> Big Al, you can well, do the hiking. I'll do the hiking, but I'm also going to Pinehurst with you oh, okay. and Rob. <laughs> I know. I can't do this forever, and I'm very motivated to climb full-time for one to two years before my body tells me to stop. We wow. then will do one to two big, slow travel trips with lots of local family stuff for the other 10 months of the year. Our annual spend now is $65,000, not including health insurance or taxes. I've been doing Roth conversions up to my Maji of 250000 the past two years to avoid the extra 3.8% capital gains tax. Now that we have slowed down to part-time with benefits from our previous high-stress, high-paying Roth ineligible jobs, we have maxed out Roth 401ks every year since dropping part-time and plan on doing this for the next three to five years while still maxing out Roth conversions into the lower brackets. Here's my question. Number one, anything else? I might want to consider as far as Roth conversions after 2025 when the Tax Cuts and Job Act expires. I plan on tapping into pre-tax just enough to qualify for a health care subsidy when eligible at 55 and 59 and a half and using taxable brokerage to fund the difference. Would like to spend closer to $90,000 to travel in climb post-working. Got it. All right. Second, am I on track to meet this three to five year goal? I don't want advice, but I want to spitball. <laughs> All right, Robbie. We can spitball this. Yeah. Cool. All right. He's done a hell of a job. He's 50 years old. He's got a couple million bucks. Yep. Wants Here. to retire in five years. Spending $65,000 a year. Wants to spend 90. 90. Yep. All I right. Think, I think he's okay, Joe. Here's here's my thinking. All right. Started two and a half million. I went four years. Split the difference between three and five. Okay. Six percent. He ends up with 3.2 million. Okay. I just took the 90 grand. I could have in indexed that for inflation, but I just took the 90 grand, divided it into 3.2 million. I get a 2.8% distribution rate. In your 50s, I'm okay with that. I, I think that works just fine. Let's see. He's got $900,000 in the traditional IRA. So he's going to be doing some conversions over the next couple of years to right. get him to the top of the 15% tax bracket. And then he's looking at ideas, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. What should he be doing? But I think you still convert all the way through and live off the non-qual. And then everything hopefully can get into your, your Roth account. I don't know why he would want to take, he's saying he wants to take distributions from his retirement account to qualify for health care subsidies. No, I think he wants to live off his brokerage so it doesn't really show up as income. I, I plan on tapping into pre-tax just enough to qualify for a health care subsidy. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because... Once you make over like 20 grand, it starts to diminish rather rapidly. Well, yeah, but if he converts all the way through. Right. Then, then. It's... Well, I suppose he's eligible. So it, he doesn't want to do the conversion because it's going to blow up his subsidies. Yeah, I think that's what he's saying. Got it. And the thing is, you can be, it's, it's for a family of, let's see, do they have kids? No kids. Yeah. Husband and wife, it's around 22 grand give or take something like that for the poverty level. And you can go up to four times that and still qualify for, for some, some of the subsidies. So just, just be aware of that. The subsidies are pretty good. Yeah. I, I would say if you can't qualify, that's a good thing. All right. Awesome. Well, good luck. Congrats. Hi guys and gal. I was looking for a quick spitball on my retirement scenario. I'm a single 43 year old. I drive a fun 2022 20, Honda HRV sport. 
sitting and enjoying neat bourbon or a Miller Lite when I'm not working. I really enjoy it in the morning <laughs> <laughs> before I go to the office. <laughs> oh, when I'm not working, I love to have. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Funny. Um, I also have an eight year old chocolate lab. Currently, between pre tax 403B HSA in Roth, I have roughly $300,000 saved up. I've been maxing these accounts out for the past five years, and I make about $100,000 a year. All right. My daughter starts college next fall, and I plan on dialing back my savings to about $10,000 per year so I can cash flow her tuition for the next four years. After that, I plan to ramp back up my savings to around $30,000, $35,000 a year until I turn 59 and a half at which point I would like to retire. Current expenses are $50,000. Hope to have the house paid out by then to estimate my $1,000 per month mortgage. Can you spitball these numbers to see if I can retire, if this plan works? I also was wondering if you could spitball a couple ideas for ways for me to find the love of my life that would align with my financial goals. Wow. Oh, we're, we've turned into matchmaking. Yeah. Joe Tyler. always wants the people to ask them personal questions. So yeah. there you go. Here we go. I'm, I'm just going to hook, hook them up. Ask Joe. Yeah. If I had to rate myself, I would say I'm a solid seven out of 10. That's pretty good. Oh, Mark. <laughs> you just got yourself <laughs> short here. Seven out of 10. Well, you know, All as right. you know, everyone is above average. Feel free to forward my email to any potential candidates that may write inquiring about me. Keep up the good work. Love the pod. Haven't missed an episode in a couple of years. Cheers. March from West Virginia. Okay. So all well, our... it's sent out seven out of 10. Yeah. Maybe higher. So all our ladies from West Virginia, go ahead and email us if you want to meet him. Yeah. Come on. He drives a little. Well, I don't know if he's a seven. I might give him a little bit less when he said, I drive a fun car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But it wow. is a... Harsh yeah. Joe. I am a, it's a Honda HR. It's a sport it's version. A sport. Oh, it's, it's a sport yeah. version. It's fun. All right. He likes a neat bourbon and a little Miller Lite sidecar. You know? Yeah. And he's got, got a it. chocolate lab. Yep. Women love dogs. Yeah. True. It's, it, it's a catch. This, he's got 300 Three, grand. 300 K saved up. He's got a daughter going to college. So he, he'll be, he'll, he'll be home free. Alone, little, yeah. <laughs> empty he's, nester. Needs a little company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, you have some cocktails, play with the chocolate lab, driving his little fun HRVC Honda, whatever, <laughs> to, to, toodle around. I love it. Okay, okay. So I, I ran a couple numbers, Joe. So for the, the next four years, he's not really going to save much because he's funding college. So his three hundred thousand at six percent over four years should be worth about four twenty, given those assumptions. And then if we fast forward four twenty. 12 years, 6% at about 35K per year. He ends up with about 1.4 million. His spending is 50. With inflation, that would be about 80. Mm -hmm. 80 into 1.4 is a 5.7% distribution rate. So it's. But you're not including Social Security, though, right? No, I'm, I'm not including Social Security. But it's 43. I, yeah. He wants to retire at 59 and a half. Yeah. So he's going to have another. Roughly ten years to bridge the gap. Yeah, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I I don't know. I, he didn't really say what Social Security is, so we can't really definitively answer. But on the surface of what we have, I would say it's it's a little bit tighter than I would be comfortable with. But the good news is, ladies, he's going to be a millionaire. <laughs> he's going to have, he's going to be have more than a million. He will have more than a million dollars. So Mark from West Virginia. Cool. Now, on the other hand, in 14, let's see, what is this? 16 years from now, 15 years, whatever. Maybe his mortgage is paid off. It will be. Right? So so now when you take the mortgage out, it's about a 5% distribution rate. I think he's super close. Given, There's so get, many different variables here. It's Given it, social security, you're probably right. It just, it, it's just, it's a little tight. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Yo, YMYW, I hope this is the right place to ask my spitball question. I'm Mike from Rhode Island, and my wife is Gina. Hello, Mike and Gina from Rhode Island. I love the show, and I'm bringing them. Binging oh, them. Jeez, bringing. 
My eyes kind of get bad after I read a few emails. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I'm binging them God, at a ridiculous rate. I've learned a ton and find that enjoy drinking a bit more since listening to your show. Oh, wow. you, may, we, you drive them to drink, Joe. <laughs> it, oh, tell we, me about it. We, it's my life. We, I drive myself to drink. We talk alcohol. Kind of gets you in the mood, right? Yeah, but you know, this whole show is all premise that we're you know just kind of shooting the breeze. Yeah, that's right. Spitballing, having a cocktail, talking about you know dreams and goals and yeah, that's aspirations. Right. We're at the bar. And but, see if we can, but, you know, see if you can do it. But it's a quiet bar, so we can hear each other. That's very quiet. It's a little lounge bar that Big Al likes to go. <laughs> I'm gonna put some music under this, like piano music. You know, I don't want a lot of loud sounds. <laughs> yes, keep it mellow. All right. So he's learned a lot. It's an acceptable amount, so it's all good. Blue Moon, Guinness, vodka mixed with seltzer waters. Wow, he's like hardcore. I, I, I'll drink the seltzer. I don't I juice it up with a little vodka. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Though, if I'm in good company, I'll drink almost anything. I drive a 2012 Chevy Silverado. My wife drives a 2022 Honda CRV. What's the most popular car of our listeners? Is it the Honda CRV or is it the Ford F-150? <laughs> we get a lot of F-150s, but we also do get a lot of Hondas. I'm going to say the Ford F-150. That, that's the most. But I tell you what, we have gotten quite a few Porsche Taycans. Taycan, whatever, however you pronounce that. Taycans? Taycan? Not sure. No. But Porsche. Are you a Porsche driver? No. I'm a Honda driver. <laughs> Fairly not. <laughs> I'm 53. My wife is 50. We're spitballing for a full retirement eight years from now when I'm 61. She's 58. Okay. All right. So what do they got? They got over a million bucks. 420000 in Ross, 500000 in deferred retirement accounts. All right. Current savings, $30,000 a year in Roth accounts, 7000 in tax deferred. This is automatic in my wife's 403B and can't be undone. Otherwise, I'd do a Roth. Three years from now, when our home is paid off, we'll stash the savings and cash for our remaining five working years, which will add up to about 150000 to alleviate the sequence of return risk. So he's saying 150000 would be the total accumulation over the five years that yeah. he'll keep in cash. So if he needs to take a distribution from cash when the market is down, it's going to eliminate the sequence of return risk. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Also, it's nice to have that cash in case you want to do some Roth conversions and Pay for the conversion tax. All right. Income. He's got ninety thousand dollars for him. He's got a pension plus part time. Okay. Yeah. Hundred thirty thousand for the wife. Yearly expenses now after tax is one fifty. Retirement. He wants to tone that down a little bit, big Al, to one thirty. Okay. So they're going to have seventy five thousand dollars of income. They want to spend one hundred thirty five thousand, and they have call it one point one million. All right, we'll draw down tax deferred assets for as long as possible and let the Roth grow. We'll have about nine to 12 year gap to bridge between retirement and drawing Social Security. Once at Social Security, our income will match our desired expenditures. Social Security is $45,000 combined at 70 for Gina. This could be significantly higher if the windfall and government pension offset are repealed. Is that in the plans? No. No. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Social Security's blown up. <laughs> the last thing they want to do is... Oh, we got extra money. Yeah. Here, let's get rid of this one. It could be, though. I mean, I, I think a lot of people hate the elimination <laughs> or the the WEP in the... Yeah. Midfall they... elimination provision. There. Thank you. All right. I hope I'm optimistic about my early retirement isn't delusional. It wouldn't be the first time. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We got Mike from Rhode Island. I want to... Get out of Dodge. He's working part time. He's got a nice pension. Yeah. He's got some part time income. Wife is going to have a pension of thirty five. So yeah, seventy five thousand dollars of income. They're going to use the money of a million dollars. Four percent of that is going to be forty. That's going to cover the one thirty. And then they got Social Security. I think they're sitting really good. Yeah, this this works. And to put more numbers to this, they've got about a million dollars. They're adding about thirty seven thousand over the next eight years. Six percent would be about two million. Their their spending of one thirty five or one thirty would be one sixty five at that point at a three percent inflation. You subtract out eighty five thousand of pension, not even including social security. The net is eighty thousand shortfall into two million four percent, perfect. Yeah, I think it looks great. 
Yeah. And then he's going to have a little cash savings for sequences. He's been listening to the show. Yeah. And uh, I didn't even count the 150. Yeah. Sequence of return risk. That's when markets go down. Right when you retire. Yeah. It can blow you up. And you're 100% of the market and you're pulling money out of the portfolio while it's down. Yep. That's that's tough to recover when that It happens. is very tough to recover. That's why retirement, again, we, we, we say this often, but these are spitballs. This is just getting you in this. Hopefully in, you have enough savings. In the vicinity. In the vicinity. <laughs> but you have to start creating a retirement income plan. How are you going to create the income from the portfolio to make sure that you're getting the income tax effectively or efficiently every single year and making sure that you you look at all the risk ahead of you, right? There's inflation risk, there's sequence of return risk, there's longevity risk, there's tax risk, there's geopolitical risk. I mean, there's all sorts of different things that you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself from. So when we do these spitballs, I think it's great to get people kind of maybe a little bit of peace of mind to say, hey, we're doing the right things. We're going to have enough cash or capital saved up by the time we retire. But please make sure that you're taking the time to map this out appropriately. So. Right. Well, the other part of this is this is just based upon continuing what you're saying is going to happen. Life changes. Maybe you got to provide for parents or who knows what happens, right? All right. Well, good luck, Mike. Uh, thanks for the email. Over 1,500 people have tried out our new free retirement calculator. So what's stopping you? Go to easyretirement.com. That's E-A-S-I retirement.com. You create a login, enter your income, savings, and expenses. And if you take the quick path, you'll know in about two minutes whether you're on the road to retirement wellness. The easyretirement.com calculator is constantly improving. Not only can you change your own numbers to see how it impacts your future retirement, you can also switch between optimistic, average, or pessimistic assumptions for inflation and returns. And you can also test different budgeting scenarios and withdrawal strategies. And you know, even if the easyretirement.com calculator says that your chance of a successful retirement is high, you can get help creating even more sophisticated financial strategies to meet your retirement needs by scheduling a one-on-one review with an experienced human financial professional from right there within the calculator. Start calculating your retirement wellness now for free at easyretirement.com. That's E-A-S-I, retirement.com. We got, hi, Andy, Joe and Big Al. Came across your podcast last year and been binging old episodes at the gym in my commute to work. Loving the episodes at the gym. Yeah. And his commute to work. Listen to three or four retirement personal investing podcasts religiously. I know. I have no life. Your podcast is the only one. That makes me chuckle on a regular basis. Well, so we got something going. Okay, we got something going for us, Big Al. Really enjoy it. When Joy rips on some of the really big wallet listeners bragging about their 26 retirement accounts, which balances nicely with Big Al's easygoing, nice guy personality. Thank goodness. Did you just call yourself Joy? (laughs) Did I? Yeah, you did. You did. That's okay. You meant Joe. Joe. Joy. I am a Joy. You are. I am a Joy. Yeah. Is that what Rose would say? No. no, no. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Well, listeners bragging about their 26 retirement accounts, which bounce nicely to Big Al's easygoing, nice personality. This Thank goodness. Very sweet, Jake. Yes. Andy is around to help Joe with pronouncing those precarious, copious words. See? <laughs> you nicely done. Right. Oh, man. Wow, See, he was it. trying to trip you up. And Killed it. Jake. <laughs> All right. He drives a 2021 metallic autumn green Subaru Outback. That's it, another popular one, the Outback. Is mean, this guy from Seattle? Portland? Mich- Michigan. Oh, rural Michigan. Sa- same idea. Metallic autumn green. <laughs> is that what you would pick? Uh, metallic no, autumn so. green? I don't think so. So okay. if he's ripping on me. I'm going gonna... it's, to. It's a station wagon. Of, of course it is. Uh, but it doesn't have tinted windows or black rims. So it's pretty cool for a grocery getter. As far as my libations of choice, I'd never say no to pina coladas. That's kind of a sweet drink. Oh, He lives in rural Michigan and drives a station wagon and that just drinks, slammed pina, pina, pina coladas. coladas. If you like pina colada. You know, oh, we're, we're, get, we're starting to get a picture. I, I did. I got this guy nailed. <laughs> Dude. He's at the gym listening to me right now. 
He's, he's going to pump a little bit more heavier weight when he we get through. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, if I'm eating a burger, I usually go for a lager, like a short local light or a Miller High Life, which is also known as champagne of beers. It says so right there on the bottle. Yeah, okay. I know all about the champagne of beer. <laughs> if I'm eating some really hearty red meat, like a ribeye or lamb chops, I will wash it down with a little cap or a little pinot. I have a couple of questions, and I'm hoping you can spitball them for me. I give To give you a little bit of background on me, I'm 50 years old, divorced bachelor with no children. Um, I'm a clinical social worker and worked in a nonprofit world for most of my career. They quit and started a solo practice about four years ago. I had around $250,000 saved in a traditional 401k at the time of my divorce five years ago. I decided to get aggressive as possible in my savings for retirement in hopes not to have to work until I'm 85. I'm sure to retire around 59 or 60. I've maintained a savings rate around 50 or 60% the past five years, which translate to around $60,000 that he's investing. Yeah, that's a lot. Very wow, good. Jake. Just a couple bucks to buy his pina coladas. <laughs> for the last, or for the first two years, I maxed out a SEP IRA, a Roth IRA, invested the rest into a brokerage account. I opened up a solo 401k, non-Roth, and an HSA three years ago, and I've been maxing them out additionally to my Roth IRA. My solo 401k allows me to save as much, save much more than the SEP IRA each year, which you guys have done a great job of covering in previous podcasts. After I max out my Roth IRA, solo 401k, and HSA every year, it pretty much uses up that $60,000 I have to invest. So I haven't been putting anything additional to my brokerage account for the last three years. My current account balances are, he's got $450,000 in his pre-tax accounts, $40,000 in a Roth account, $150,000 in a brokerage account, and $20,000 in an HSA. So call that five, six, fifty. Six fifty. I call it a six fifty. Okay, so he's got some low index funds. First question he's got: If you're in my shoes, well, I would stop drinking pina coladas, <laughs> and I would sell that station wagon. That if I was in your shoes, <laughs> yeah, that's that's number one. First thing, First thing. You, you like the champagne of beers there. I will drink a Miller High Life with you, but yeah. All right. Would you maintain this investing plan for the next 10 years, maxing out the Roth IRA, HSA, and solo 401k, or should I divert some of the money I would be putting in the solo K into my brokerage account to give me better tax diversification? What do you think, Al? Yeah, I would, if if I have extra, I'm putting it in, I'm doing the Roth provision of the solo K rather than brokerage because it's tax-free. Yep. So he's got a solo 401k. So you can do a Roth solo 401k. So instead of going pre-tax, I would go a Roth 401k all day long. I would say now they and then they, your your employer contribution would be pre-tax. Correct. So you get best of both worlds. You're gonna get a tax deduction, and then you're also gonna get a, a lot more money into the the Roth, and then I would continue to do the Roth IRAs. Uh, otherwise, I like what he's saying, but yeah, no, I and plus you're gonna retire at 60, so the Roth funds are available. Yeah. And the IRA funds are available too. Yep. Okay, second question. Which ties into the question, into the first question. I asked my tax account and a fee-based financial advisor about doing Roth conversions. And they both told me that they didn't feel it made sense for me to do a conversion as I should be in a lower tax bracket in retirement compared to, compared to currently while I'm working. I'm in the 24% tax bracket now. In retirement, I'm projecting my living expenses will be $60,000 per year, 3% inflation rate times 10, which would be about $72,000 when I'm 60. Would it be a good strategy to live off my broke account for the first three to four years in retirement in order to start doing Roth conversions from my pre-tax plans into my brokerage account? Is, um, until my brokerage account, account is depleted, or would it be better just to use my pre-tax accounts first in retirement uh, so that by reducing those accounts, my RMDs will be less? I do not have any legacy goals and plan to blow all my retirement savings on tropical drinks yeah, of course <laughs> and hanging out with Big Al in Hawaii and on fishing trips, so doing Roth conversions 
would be done only if it reduces my tax burden in retirement. I'm living way below my means right now. To be able to retire earlier, you want to make sure I'm putting my limited investment dollars in the right places for the next decade to help my tax situation long term. Your spitball would be greatly appreciated. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Jake. Okay. All right. So we got divorced. Yeah, which is tough. So you, it, you almost kind of start over. It's like, man, I got $250,000. I, I got a super, I, supercharge. I got a supercharge. Yeah. And so he's like saving half of his income. Right. It's crazy. $60,000 a year he's saving. Right. And so he's probably making 110, 120. But he thinks he's in the 24% tax bracket. Well, as a single taxpayer, sing- the 24% tax bracket starts at starts at 100K. But then there's, you know, the standard deduction. He's He's probably just barely into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So does it make sense for him to do conversions? Well, let's see. His balances are now $450,000 in a pre-tax account. He wants to retire in 10 years. And so if he continues to save into that pre-tax account the way he's doing it, so that's five, that's going to be a million plus, he's going to have a, a million and a half, two million bucks in the retirement account? Yeah, probably a million and a half. He'll have about two million total. Okay. Something like that. Is that what calculation you ran or you just? It, well, I I ran starting with 650, adding 60 grand a year, 6% 10 years is 2 million. Okay. So uh, that's including the Ross, yep. right? And uh, yeah, the small Ross. And the brokerage, and right? The brokerage, so yeah. pr- probably a little less than one and a half million. But anyway, just doing some quick math here. That se- the 60,000 of expenses, it's not going to be 72. That's simple interest. You got to do compound interest. It's actually going to be about eighty thousand. But if you take eighty thousand into two million, four percent, right? You're sixty years old. Like yeah. Social Security in ten years. Yeah, I think that probably works just fine. As as far as Roth though, do I, the Roth now. He's right at the cusp of the twenty four. If he goes pre tax on the employer side of his SEP IRA because he's self employed, find some more expenses. Get that taxable income, and then do the Roth provision of the the so he could put thirty thousand, and he could put almost forty thousand dollars into the Roth and another twenty thousand pre tax. Right. So the pre tax is going to help his taxes out. Then he's going to have a ton of money sitting in Roth. That's the, the equivalent of doing a conversion. And yeah, I agree with the CPA and the fee based advisor. Him being in a lower tax bracket, if all of his money is going in Roth, but if he's got to take the money out of the retirement account, two million four eight single, if he stays single, it's going to be close. He'll probably be probably close to the same tax bracket. He might be a little bit lower. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, tax rates are supposed to change, so he could be... The 24 is going to be 25 or 28. He could with Altman, right? But I, I think I, I don't think there's a clear story to do Roth conversions right now, but I, I would do the solo K employee portion in Roth to build that up. And then you retire, then I'd be converting some then, depending upon where you end up with all this stuff. Yep. And if you <clears throat> your solo 401k doesn't have a Roth provision, then just all you have to do is change your custodian. Yeah. So, right. or, or just... A lot of some custodians don't have the Roth in the solo flow and case. And some can if some can add it if you didn't check the box in the first place. All right. Great question, Jake. Good, good luck. Keep grinding. Have those pina coladas. I'll have a Mai Tai with you. All right. Yeah, that's it for us. Another wonderful show in the books, Big Al. It's been amazing. Andy, great job as always. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Yeah. And Jake, if I was in your shoes, that's what I do. Yeah, you, you told him. <laughs> Those pina coladas. Sell, sell that car. <laughs> change your drink. Oh, and boy. then do the sell okay on the Roth provision. Yeah, that was fun. Fun show today. All right, we got to get the hell out of here. Show's got your money up. We'll see you next time. Joe threw out his back, binging YMYW, Joe's Atlanta experiences, hiking and climbing, MTV, and Hondas in the derails, so stick around. Your Money, Your Wealth is your podcast, and we love it when you tell new people about the show. Leaving your honest reviews and ratings for Your Money, Your Wealth and Apple Podcasts helps too, as well as Amazon, Audible, CastBox, Good Pods, Pandora, Player FM, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Podknife, and Spotify. Those are all the apps I know of where you can leave a rating or review, but if you know of others, let me know. Your Money, 
Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Schedule a no-cost, no-obligation, comprehensive financial assessment and get more than just a spitball on your retirement. Click the free financial assessment banner in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257. You can meet in person at the Pure Financial offices in San Diego, Irvine, Brea, Woodland Hills, Mercer Island, Chicago, Denver, and now Davis, California, or online from home, no matter where you are. The experienced professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure will work with you to create a detailed retirement plan that's customized specifically for your financial needs and goals. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Threw my back out this morning. So. You did? I'm From at, at the gym or what? Yeah, I'm doing yeah. burpees. Oh, yeah, those are tough on your body. <laughs> you know, now that you're getting to an advanced age, you might want to rethink. Oh! Ooh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's get Good some. way to start, Al. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people get caught up in this crowd? Because they love the sound of your voice, Joe. Oh, wow. To practice it. I practiced well, in my reading. You know what? Just read aloud. Some Curious people. George. Who was that that recommended Curious George to me? I don't know, but it was my months son? ago now. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad it worked. That's cool. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. It, it, big time. But yeah. Big time improvement. Yellow hat. <laughs> Never been in North Carolina. I haven't either. Andy? Yes, I have. I used to live in Atlanta, Georgia, and it, when you lived in Atlanta, you didn't take the time to actually go to any of the surrounding states? You know, I lived in the Darlington, yeah, yeah. in Atlanta, Georgia, right off the Peach Street yeah. Avenue. There's only 150 peach trees, but okay. Yeah, it was like, you know, kind of midtown, right right across yeah. the street from the Piedmont Hospital. There you go. And there's no reason to leave. You had everything you needed. It was awful. <laughs> it wasn't good. You weren't there that long. No. Yeah. No, no, no. I was going to marry my college sweetheart. Then we lived in live like an efficiency. Okay. So it was like 200 square foot. And then her dad decided to come and stay with us for a month. Oh, in the in the efficiency? In the efficiency. Got it. Oh, that my. Was, must have been fun. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't last long after that. Got it. Yeah, Asheville, North Carolina is only like three and a half hours from Atlanta. You could have gone and visited. It's a cool I place. I, I, I would love to. I, I, I got to get there. Yeah. But you were living in inefficiency and dealing with your... Yeah, I would was, have been father-in-law, so I guess it, was, it made it difficult. It was a crowded, crowded little, it was a crowded little home. There. <laughs> he wants to be a professional climber for one to two years. He, that's his passion. That's what he wants to do, right? I do four burpees and I blow on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, Rob, I'm in my mid sixties and I still do major hikes every year, so it can be done. I wonder what he's going to hike. What is a professional like Mount Kilimanjaro? Yeah, that could be. I mean, when when he says climbing, or is climbing is that like with chalk in your hands in that thing in the you know you yes. got it like on your your ass? Yeah, climbing is generally considered rock climbing. Rock climbing, you know. And it could be like well, it's not a hike like you. No, it's you not. Wear it's not tennis shoes. You wear <laughs> your eight base axe. Or <laughs> I usually wear hiking boots, but anyway, I get what you mean. I'm I'm not a rock climber. I do. Some hikes require you to scramble on the rocks a little bit at the top without ropes. I'm I'm okay with that. You have poles, and you have no. Like, I, at that point, I leave the poles. <laughs> you have big sketcher tennis shoes with poles. What, like, once uh, I get to scrambling, the poles got to go down. So this guy is like wearing no shirt, just ripped. Oh, and he's, and he's got he, chalk. He's on got his he, hands. He's got that little sack. And, yeah, he's got his uh, sack. His belt. His, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rob's legit. He gets <laughs> pills there and plays Pinehurst. Yeah, he does. Remember Yo MTV Raps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. I, I don't know. I just saw Big Yo. Yo. It reminded me of Yo MTV Raps. The good old days. Uh, Wait, what Honda yeah. do, you, you, do you drive? I've got a 2019 Honda Fit. And in the pandemic, I also had a 2015 and got rid of that. Okay. Yes, right. we're a Fit family. Fit family. Why do people binge this stuff? Because it's so good. It's not good at all. (laughs) I could not, I mean, I tried to listen to a show recently. Well, you can't listen to yourself. It it lasted maybe 30 seconds. (laughs) Wait, you tried to listen to one of our shows? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I listened to Andy's intro and I was like, oh, so this is going to be good. And, and then, then all then, of a sudden, it's then, just, then, just then, terrible. I listened like five seconds of myself. I'm like, <laughs> I cannot read. I sound like I have a second grade education. 
<laughs> I haven't listened to our show for a long, long time. I remember when we were doing the radio. Yeah. And we, we used to do live radio, but then we pre-recorded. And I did listen to one of those driving one time. And it was really funny because it was like I hadn't even remembered the question fully or what we were talking about. But you said something, and I said, oh, this is what I would say. And that's what I said. <laughs> wow. Imagine that. Huh? How about that? Huh? Wow. It's just what old age is going to feel like. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's... <laughs> So, Welcome. Joe, what, what spurred you to actually listen for once? I don't know, <laughs> to be honest with you. you. You didn't make it to the derails? No, I didn't make That's it. That's what we should, we should fast forward to the derails. There's chapters in there, so you can jump right to them. Oh, okay, maybe we should try that. <laughs>